Welcome to the life and journey of Most Reverend Maurice Mohatia Makumba, Archbishop elect of the Archdiocese of Kisumu. Bishop Mohatia was born on 19th May 1968 in Liranda village, Shibui Parish, in the Catholic Diocese of Kakamega. His parents were Harun Bandi Makumba and Rita Muihali of Happy Memories. He is the sixth born in a family of seven, namely Protas, Christopher, Beatrice, Jonah, Sister Adelaide, Bishop Morris, and Patrick. He went to school at Liranda Primary School and St. Charles Luanga Mukumu Secondary School. As a young boy, Morris was greatly influenced by the mother, Mama Rita, and the way of life of the priests in his parish as he narrates. After completing my second education in St. Charles Luanga, uh, I always had the desire uh, to become uh, a priest. And this uh, desire to become a priest, I can say, was um, already planted in me by the faith of uh, my mother. My mother was um, a Catholic. My father was not a Catholic, but he was uh, a Christian. So most of my Catholic background I received from my mother. She's the one who emphasized that we go to church, we go and learn catechism. And after catechism, I became an altar boy in our, in our parish, uh, Shibuye, uh, St. Joseph's, the workers' parish. It is there I first encountered uh, uh, the priests who are missionaries, Milhil missionaries, and I was interested in uh, serving mass, so I became an, an altar boy, and I was I was very very impressed by uh, the way I saw uh, the priests uh, behaving themselves, the way they were vesting before mass, and so on and so forth. So they grew inside me the desire also to be to be like them, uh, to vest the way they were vesting to celebrate Mass, to go and baptize people the way they were doing. The entire life and uh, part of the mystery of life that surrounded the priest really impressed me. And my uh, very initial desire to become a priest, I think, was nurtured at that particular, particular time. After secondary education, he joined St. Mary's Molo Major Seminary, where he studied spirituality and introduction to seminary life. He studied philosophy at St. Augustine's Major Seminary and theology at St. Thomas Aquinas Senior Seminary, Nairobi. In 1993, he was ordained deacon by Right Reverend Raphael Ndingi Mwana Ndeki, by then Bishop of Nakuru, as he recalls. So in our final year, in 1993, in the month of, uh, of May, uh, on the 7th of May, we were ordained, um, ordained deacons in St. Thomas Aquinas uh, Seminary. And uh, as history would have it, the person who ordained to me as a deacon in St. Thomas Aquinas Seminary was um, the late Archbishop Emeritus of Nairobi, Rafael Ndingi Mwananzeki, who later on I would become his uh, uh, second successor in the uh, in, in 1994, he was ordained a priest for the Catholic Diocese of Kakamega by Right Reverend Philip Sulmeti in Shibui Parish. After ordination, he worked at St. Joseph's Parish Kakamega as assistant priest 
Vice Rector at St. Peter's Seminary, Mukumu. He recalls his experience with the young ones at St. Peter's Seminary, Mukumu. After about just two months at the cathedral, I proceeded to St. Peter's Minor Seminary to begin preparing myself to receive the young students who are going to report uh, in January 1995. I had a very nice experience in St. Peter's Seminary, uh, working among the young people, the young seminarians, playing football with them on an almost uh, daily basis, going to the farm with them, uh, doing manual work with them, very many things. And um, the enjoyable part about it is that working with them, interacting with them, they, they, keep, you, they keep you very young. and. Uh, you also come to learn so many things uh, from them. So they are very uh, beautiful years and experience I will never forget in my life as a priest, the experience of those years I spent in St. Peter's Minor Seminary. Some of the students whom I taught at that particular time, uh, by the grace of God today, are already priests. And I was in St. Peter's Seminary from 1995, January, until August of 1998. In 1998, he was sent for specialized studies in Rome in the Pontifical University of the Holy Cross to study philosophy as a speciality that impressed him most, as he narrates. In August 1998, my bishop, Philip Solometti, sent me for specialized studies in Rome at the Pontifical Holy Cross University, and I went to, he asked me to go and specialize in, uh, in philosophy. So I proceeded to Rome in the month of August. I was in Rome the first month, the last few days of August, and the entire month of um, September, uh, following a course in Italian, uh, because uh, uh, without Italian, it's very difficult to do studies in Italy, because almost all courses are done done in Italian, so you normally have an intensive course at the beginning. I'd had a crash course uh, while here in Kenya, but still, when you're living away from the place where the language is spoken, you don't grasp it uh, very well. So the one-month intensive course in, uh, in Italian in Italy did us a lot of good. We did not yet grasp everything, but we almost had sufficient uh, knowledge of the language uh, to begin uh, studies formally in the month of October of 1998. So I began my specialization in philosophy in 1998, and it lasted two years, from 98, 99, 99, 2000. And in 2000, October, I had completed my specialization in uh, uh, philosophy with a master's degree or um, a licentiate in, uh, in philosophy. After that, with the permission of my bishop, I proceeded on to the next level uh, to do my doctoral studies in the same, same field in philosophy and uh, I, was, uh, I remained in the same university for that specialization. Upon his return from Rome, he was appointed in St. Augustine Senior Seminary Mabanga as formator, lecturer and dean of students. From Mabanga, he was appointed to St. Matthias Mulumba Senior Seminary Tindinho as rector, after which he was appointed to St. Thomas Aquinas Senior Seminary Nairobi as rector, an experience he recalls with a lot of gratitude. So I came back home at the beginning of 2002, and as, um, as I landed, I think there was already work for me to do. I proceeded straight. Uh, to send, uh, send uh, Augustine Senior Seminary Mabanga to begin my apostolate, my ministry as uh, a teacher in philosophy in that seminary. I met my bishop. He told me I had been requested to provide uh, the teachers for the seminary and he asked me to go there. And so I, I was very, very happy to go because that is what I had prepared myself to do. So from uh, 2002, July, I proceeded to St. Augustine Senior Seminary now in my second capacity, not as a student anymore, but this time round as a lecturer, as a formator, and I was appointed there as the Dean of, uh, of Students. We had a very nice community in St. Augustine Senior Seminary of Priests, and again, I thoroughly enjoyed my years in St. Augustine. 
with the seminarians again what I, what I had begun doing the minor seminarians in St. Peter's Seminary continued in St. Augustine Senior Seminary playing football with them, going to work with them, going to harvest maize, sugar cane and so on and so forth apart from the normal classwork because the formation of a seminary in the seminary is not just about academic it's about the formation of the whole person and the assessment of the whole person and their suitability for the uh, priesthood. We were, I was to remain in uh, St. Augustine Senior Seminary as a lecturer the whole of um, 2002, 2003, 3, 4, 4, up to 5. In 2005, uh, July, I was given a new appointment to move from St. Augustine's uh, Senior Seminary to proceed on St. Matthias Mulumba Senior Seminary in Tindinho as, uh, as director. And uh, the good, good thing about it is that um, I didn't have a lot of difficulty knowing the students because the students whom I had completed with in St. Augustine Senior Seminary, half of the class, the one with which, uh, actually the entire class, we went with them to St. Matthias Mulumba Senior Seminary to open a new academic uh, year and to open also a new phase and a new chapter in the life of that uh, seminary. And I was to remain in uh, St. Matthias Mulumba Senior Seminary for two academic years, 205, 206, 206, 207. And 207, in July, again, I got a new appointment and I moved from St. Augustine Senior Seminary and I was appointed in St. Thomas Aquinas uh, Seminary in Nairobi as a director. So I reported in St. Augustine's in the year 2007, in the month of July, July, August, I'd reported in preparation for the opening of the academic year that um, at August. Again, in St. Thomas Aquinas Seminary, yes, it is a theological made a place for studying theology and learning theology, and yet I was specialized in philosophy. There was a bit of a challenge me getting used to the new life, uh, but my work was mainly more of administration uh, rather than um, uh, uh, entirely being in the classroom for lectures. So it was actually getting used more to the work of administration, the work of management of, uh, of the seminary. And I was in St. Thomas Aquinas from 2007 to 2008, 8, 2009, until 2009. He was appointed Bishop of Nakuru on the 19th December 2009 in 2010. He was consecrated and installed as Bishop of Nakuru. He has been in Nakuru for 12 years as he narrates his pastoral experience in the Catholic Diocese of Nakuru. in Nakuru for quite some time. Uh, I've been in Nakuru up to now for just over 12 years, 12 years and a few, a few weeks. 12 years and a few weeks full of, full, of, full of life, full of experiences. 12 years full of joy, 12 years full of challenges in pastoral work, in administration, in management and so on. I have encountered many people. I, in, uh, I have gone in, uh, to every corner of of the diocese. Actually, I know Nakuru more than I know my own home, home diocese because there are certain places of my own diocese where I have not been. But I have gone to the farthest point of the diocese, stretching all the way from my Mayu on this one side up to Rotu on the other side where we border with the, the Turukana. I've had a very nice experience with the, the priests of the diocese of, uh, of Nakuru. Very good people, very understanding people, very loyal people to the faith and people who understand what actually the universality of the church is all about. I have had a very nice experience as well with the religious, both the brothers and the, the sisters in the diocese and we had quite a good collaboration between us and them and good collaboration between them and the priests in the diocese and life has been very sweet, very nice because of this close collaboration of this principal collaborators of mine in the diocese. The lady, the lady uh, formed a very, 
uh, essential part of the diocese. And I can say the laity of the diocese of Nakuru are a well-formed laity. Over the years, they have been educated, they have been uh, catechized, they have been formed to understand their faith, to look after their church, to have a sense of ownership of the church, to love their priests, to have a good relationship with them, to support the church. And all these things, they are doing them, they have been doing them, and I'm, I'm confident, and I know, they are going to do them even with my successor in, uh, in Nakuru. I, I leave Nakuru with, with, with a lot of joy and full of happiness because I have been here for 12 years, but they sound like five years. They sound like two years. How they have moved so fast for us to begin counting from one to reach 12, even to myself, I cannot fully explain. I want to thank God really for His grace. For these 12 years, I have been able to work in the Diocese of Nakuru. I want to give each one of those years to each of the 12 uh, apostles or each of the 12 tribes of, uh, of Israel. It has been quite a, a terrific experience and I pray for the people of uh, Nakuru, the entire community, the body of Christ, the priests, the religious and the laity, that God blesses them for what they have been to me and for what we have been able to do together both in pastoral work, the spiritual care of the people, in the development of the diocese, and in reaching out to people, especially in areas of social work, areas of education, and areas of wealth. One of the areas in the diocese that struck me so much was uh, uh, parts of, parts of uh, Baringo, especially that area that is normally referred to as East Pakot Dinari. Because I was struck by it, because I found that there are areas with our brothers and sisters who are still going through primary evangelization. And you can't imagine that you are in a diocese in one place, almost everybody has known and heard about Christ. Then there's another corner in the same diocese where people are still to hear about, about Christ. So I took it upon myself to have some special interest among these people, also because of uh, the challenges they go through that are known to most people in the country, problems with the um, uh, clashes that go in that particular place. Sometimes we have um, prolonged droughts that cause a lot of damage to the lives of the people because there are many pastoralists, lack of rain for long, 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 many months. So they have quite some uh, challenges. And in the process of looking for pasture and looking for water, it adds up to other things and many other problems come up. But I'm happy that now the situation is improving slowly by slowly. Our program as a diocese was to try and take the children to school. And by taking them to school, introducing them to education, both in Baringo itself and in Nakuru, slowly by slowly they will come to transform their own, their own society. And I think there is already, there's already a light at the end of, of, of the tunnel. The young people whom we first took for the very first scholarships we offered are already through secondary school, they have joined university. And I am confident eventually they will come back, evangelize their own land, develop their own land, and make the life, the, the way of living and well-being of the people there better than it is, uh, it is today. In his tenure in Nakuru, Bishop Muhatia has witnessed the diocese grow in greater heights of self-reliance. The people of Nakuru have a great sense of ownership of, uh, of the church. Uh, in Nakuru we have had two synods up to now, and the second diocesan synod was actually themed as empowerment of the lay faithful, empowerment of the lay faithful. And it emphasized in a special way how the laity can be involved more in the activities of the church, in uh, growing the faith in the diocese, in supporting the church to grow, and so on and so forth. And they have really embraced this, um, uh, this, this uh, um, uh, request and this desire 
uh, following upon our second diocesan uh, synod. When I came to the diocese of Nakuru in the year 2010, on the 27th of February, when I was consecrated in the ASK showground, already the spirit of self-reliance had been nurtured in the people by my two predecessors, Archbishop Raphael Dingi Mwananzeki and Archbishop uh, Peter Akairo. So mine was actually to pick up, pick up from there. By the time I came in 2010, we were raising up to about 14 million shillings for the development of, of, the, of the diocese, which was a lot of money at that particular time already, because already you could see the church is moving towards self-reliance. Uh, self uh, self and then with a bit of more conversation with the people, all the priests, all the religious, all the laity, the leaders of various parishes, we came to an agreement and we, we agreed that um, we were doing a lot already but we needed to up our game in terms of the support of the diocese and in self-reliance. So what used to be called self-reliance initiative day was transformed into the celebration of the life of the family of the people of Nakuru and it became a family day and we all agreed we have a set date in the year, in the month of September, up to the first Saturday of September every year, is the day we celebrate our life as the family of the people of God in the Diocese of Nakuru. And in, the celebra in celebrating with gratitude what God has done for us and us in the diocese, to our families, to our parishes, the people also at the same time make a contribution to support their diocese. And this has come to be referred to as Family Day Contributions. And from a contribution of about 14 million in uh, uh, 2010 and then 2011, in 2012, because of further efforts to involve the people more, especially in their sense of ownership of for the diocese, that year in 2012 we were able to raise 46 million shillings uh, from 14 million shillings. And from that moment on, that amount of money has never gone down. Today, the family day contribution in the Diocese of Nakuru ranges between 65 and 80 million every, every year. And this is money which the faithful give that it may be used for the support of the bishop's office, the entire secretariat, and for the development of for the diocese. So these are the two main voteheads that are dependent on the family day contribution. Support the secretariat, the courier of the diocese, uh, by a certain percentage, another percentage to go to development. And because of this consistency in the contribution by the people of God in Nakuru, we're able to plan, to plan for the sustainability of the diocese by investing in some projects that will help the diocese in the future. Our first focus at the very beginning was to focus on the issue of the retirement of, uh, of the clergy. And for us to um, uh, invest for the retirement of the clergy after discussion, we decided we put up uh, a building which will serve like a, a business center and the proceeds of which will create a fund that will go towards um, uh, supporting the clergy in their retirement. That is how we constructed what we today call the Assumption Center, which is in, in town close to our diocesan offices. On 18th February 2022, Bishop Maurice Muhatia was appointed Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Kisumu by Pope Francis, following the transfer and appointment of Most Reverend Philip Agnolo as the Archbishop of the Catholic Archdiocese of Nairobi. The entire family of the Catholic Diocese of Nakuru remain thankful to God and to the Bishop for the committed service he has rendered to them and they continue wishing him well as he moves to Kisumu Archdiocese. And I want to say that 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 I want to say Kwa sababu, tumilikuwa tumemuzoea na pia kwa kazi ya likuwa naenda vizuri. Lakini kwa sababu ya sauti ya kanisa na sauti ya roo mtakatifu, sisi tunamuambea aende vyema 
licha ya kuwa tumemwachilia shingo upande lakini hatuna la kusema tumwombea aende vizuri ili aweze kuhudumia wale wa huko pia lakini jambo lenye tungependa kuomba tu ku, kuomba ni kuwa tupate mwingine mwenye pia atashikilia kazi vizuri kama hiyo kwa sababu hata yeye ameunganisha vizuri mapadri watawa na walei na wamefanya kazi mzuri sana yeye mwenyewe akiwa kielelezo and i can say that uh, on behalf of the religious in the catholic diocese of nakuru and there is a lot that we religious can talk about bishop the archbishop elect maurice mohatia makumba and one of the issues is that uh, Bishop has really united the religious together in this diocese and he has highly treasured the work that the religious are doing in the Catholic Diocese of Nakuru. Uh, my name is uh, Father Cleophas Oseso. I am uh, the parish priest of uh, Bahati Parish. Uh, at the same time, I'm also the Vicar General of the, of the Diocese of, uh, of Nakuru. Uh, we have been privileged for the last uh, 12 years to have uh, His Grace, uh, Archbishop Maurice Muhatia, with us here in Akuru as our, as our shepherd. And uh, our experience of uh, his uh, stewardship of the diocese in the last 12 years has been great. Uh, he has uh, propelled many initiatives, uh, beginning with the pastoral ministry, where we have seen uh, the number of our parishes grow tremendously. He has encouraged the spread of the gospel by opening of the new parishes, which today it's adding to about 60 parishes. Uh, over and above that, he has been very supportive to our priests in whichever area they, wa they are. And uh, the dust of Nakuru is really uh, is a huge diocese. It constitutes of uh, two counties of Nakuru and, uh, and Baringo. And we know very well that Baringo is, uh, is a difficult terrain. But in all that, he has really been very supportive to the priests and nuns that work in that region. Uh, for instance, in the area of uh, Baringo, in particular East Pokot, Bishop uh, started an initiative of education, East Pokot Education Initiative, where he has uh, helped a lot of young people to have access to education, because this is an area that is well known for uh, tribal conflicts and clashes. And uh, Bishop has believed that uh, the only way to transform and change the lives of these people is by giving them education, of which he has done it very well, whereby uh, he has organized uh, fundraisers every year. We gather in one of the parishes of East Pokot to collect funds to help uh, educate our young boys and girls in that uh, region. Um, over and above that, he has also initiated development activities uh, in the diocese. Just to mention, we have the Assumption Plaza, which through the initiatives of uh, uh, the bishop and uh, support from the Christians through the Family Day, we have been able to put up the Assumption Plaza. Uh, we have also, Bishop has also been able to guide the diocese in renovating our pastoral center, which today I would believe is one of the, the biggest in the country. And uh, the progress is, is still progressing. And uh, very soon we will be having a, a pastoral center that has perhaps all the facilities of a modern conference uh, center in the, in the country. Uh, on uh, the area of uh, priests, he has also established uh, St. Joseph's uh, Spiritual Center, which is a retirement place for the, for the priest. The construction is uh, currently going on and uh, perhaps maybe it's uh, maybe 50% or 
around that uh, co complete. Um, a place where people can go for spiritual renewal and also priests who have ministered uh, in the diocese would also have a place to, to rest once they, they retire. Um, uh, he has, uh, at the pastoral center again, he initiated a, a, a hospitality college called uh, the Mother Day Hospitality College, where young people again have access to skills, and in particular skills uh, that would be handy in, uh, in the hospitality industry, where they are going to be trained to be cooks and uh, cateresses and also people who take care of uh, uh, facilities where people board and, uh, and lodge. Uh, that is also a very great initiative to help uh, our young people be self-reliant and uh, uh, self-supporting. Uh, uh, on the other hand, I would also want to say that the other thing that Bishop has done is uh, he has been able to give access to priests who would like to further their education. And uh, quite a number, I would say, Perhaps maybe the largest number of priests who have been who have got gotten out of the diocese to go for further studies has increased. Uh, he has given access to priests and has supported the priest to go for studies right from the first degrees to until the doctoral level in uh, in different institutions, both here locally in the country and even, uh, even abroad. And I think that is really phenomenal in the sense that uh, it has given capacity to priests to be able to serve in the, in, the, in the parishes and also to serve in institutions of higher learning, colleges, universities, and even in our, in our local schools. So that again is a, is a landmark and uh, maybe a legacy that we are really proud of uh, the bishop having been here only for, for 12 years and he has been able to achieve uh, quite a lot in that, uh, in that regard. So uh, pastoral wise, bishop has also been very much available to our parishioners, especially by dedicating time to come to the parishes and uh, minister to the, uh, the people, especially uh, giving the sacraments of uh, confirmation, and even in very other in, in other events where parishes are celebrating the anniversaries or significant uh, things that are happening in the parishes, he has been present in a, in a very big way. Uh, he has also been very supportive to the clergy and religious, especially when uh, it comes to the times of bereavement and a priest has lost a mother or a father, a religious person also who has lost a mother or a father, uh, Bishop has been very supportive. He has visited the families, he has even been present in the celebration of the, of the last rites and perhaps even uh, the, uh, the masses, the funeral masses for for our beloved who have uh, passed away. So I would say that his availability to the priest and also religious was very, very evident. He took his time and he was ready to take care of uh, the needs of uh, his priests and even the religious who have worked in the, in the diocese. Uh, in relation again with the religious, I think uh, he has, ha he has had uh, a heart for the religious. We have seen again the number of uh, religious institutions coming into the diocese to minister also increase. You know? In the last perhaps uh, few years, the number has, uh, has increased. The presence of uh, the Franciscan, the conventuals, uh, the, the like community, and the religious nuns, quite a number have also come to the diocese and that is a, a reflection that uh, he is accommodative and he is uh, one who wants Nakuru to be what Nakuru is. Nakuru is a cosmopolitan city 
Uh, we have people from diverse backgrounds, different ethnic groups, and uh, I think even the, my, the bringing in people of different uh, uh, backgrounds in terms of uh, religious communities is, uh, is a way of growth and also helping the, the Christian communities embrace different spiritualities and different ministries and apostolates that are uh, offered by the various communities in the, in the diocese. Uh, in terms of education, uh, Bishop has had uh, a heart for education in the diocese. He has been very supportive to our institutions of learning, right from the kindergarten, the nursery schools. He has been invited a lot of the time to even preside over the graduations of the little ones, the primary schools. He has been available to celebrate masses with them and uh, also the high schools where he has been present in most of the functions and the celebrations that uh, are in our, our schools. Very recently uh, he initiated again the, um, the establishment of, uh, of a university which uh, today, uh, the 16th of, of March, he is going to preside over the groundbreaking of uh, uh, Loyola University that is going to be established in Molo, in our diocese of, uh, of Nakuru. That illustrates how much education has been at his heart and the support and the love for education both for our clergy and uh, the people of God in Nakuru. He has made sure that, uh, yes, people get access to education even up to the highest level that uh, they can. Um, over and above that, uh, the ministry for the, uh, the care for our sick has also been at the heart of our bishop. And uh, this has been demonstrated by uh, the establishment of our Mercy and uh, Our Lady of Mercy Hospital. It started as a, an, uh, a facility for outpatient and uh, with the help of Bishop, it has grown to be a, a full-fledged hospital. Uh, uh, and uh, right now, the hospital is in high demand. The numbers are huge. And we are very soon, again, going to uh, have a groundbreaking for a big hospital that perhaps will be accommodating about 100, 200 uh, patients, uh, inpatients. Uh, in that way, uh, it's going to be perhaps one of the big hospitals that we shall be having in, uh, in Nakuru. Again, that has been facilitated and uh, uh, guided uh, by our bishop to see to it that we provide the best health care for our people of the Diocese of Nakuru and even those that come from the surrounding areas. So, looking at it broadly, Bishop has tried to touch each and every aspect of uh, the lives of the, of the Christians in, uh, in the Diocese. He has touched we are on education, health, and uh, the pastoral ministry uh, in the diocese. And uh, I think uh, his presence was a blessing to us. We want to thank God and appreciate uh, all that he has uh, done for the people of Nakuru. And uh, we want to pray for him, that God bless him and give him the same spirit and the vigor that he had in Nakuru to again share his gifts, of kindness and generosity to the people of uh, the Archdiocese of Kisumu. We want to wish him all the best. He was friendly to all of us and uh, we are going to, to miss him. And uh, we want to wish that God keeps him, gives him the strength that he needs and blesses him in his new ministry. <laughs> Arbaine ya machini ya arbaine. Lakini wakati huu wapapa anaondoka, hamewezesha parukia zimefika uh, stini na mili.
kumaanisha ya kwamba kiroho alikuwa sawa kabisa. Uh, tunamshukuru, tunamtakia kila laheri na tunaomba ya kwamba atakaye kuja pia tutajumuika pamoja na ili mambo yake Mwenyezi Mungu yaweze kuendelea mbele kwa sababu tunajua hakuna pengo popote kanisani lazima izidwe. Otherwise tutamiss hata saa hizi tulikuwa tunakutana tu tujue ataenda vipi tukimpeana turudi tukilia wale waende wakicheka lakini yote ni yake Mwenyezi Mungu aweze kubarikiwa sana na asante we continue praying for his grace Morris Muhatia Makumba as he begins his apostolate in the archdiocese of Kisumu and call upon all to collaborate with him as he witnesses our blessed lord among god's people we entrust him to our blessed mother mary and under the care of saint teresa of the child jesus patron saint of the archdiocese of kisumu